Hello, my name is BT and I'm here today to talk about DL. Don't ask me where these initial names came from. However, I do have PW out in the parking lot for after the service. If anybody has any questions, I'm sure he'll be able to help you out. Now, I've known DL since second grade. It is my pleasure to share a few memories about him with you today. Don loved his family. He loved his business, he loved his church, he loved his buddies, and he loved his life. I want to tell you a few stories about his life and his buddies. During DL's last month, he managed to host many gatherings in his driveway and out in his yard, and he even managed to make it over to Bent Creek on two different Fridays. Bottom line, he loved his friends. Let me start near the beginning. Don was the kid in school with the ears that stuck out and thick black rim glasses. Think of a miniature Phil Silvers. Balco broke Don's glasses several times in the sixth grade and Don never let him forget it. Through junior and senior high, Don was a pretty regular juvenile. He lettered in soccer and we never let him forget that. He took Latin for a foreign language and we presumed he was going to be a priest because who else uses Latin? And when it was time to go out cruising for chicks, he had his mother's Ford Falcon to impress the ladies. Several personality traits started to appear as Don graduated from high school. Don was steady and consistent. He was a steady Eddie guy. He always knew what you were going to get. He was a very loyal guy. He had the ability to find humor in everything and the wit to deliver his thoughts. Don loved a party. And on to college he went. <clears throat> college for a large group of us who graduated from high school in 1968 represented a legal way to dodge the draft with a four or five or six year party. Don selected the U of M and stumbled into the Psy U house. Those frat house stories are long and beautiful, but we're not going to tell them today. One of my favorite college stories with DL was when he moved above the hardware store with Dirk, Ray, Joe, and Duran. Across the street was a Shakey's Pizza. The boys would sit up in the window on the second floor with binoculars and watch people, and if they saw somebody checking out with pizza still on their plate, they'd send a runner over to pick up whatever they could. On a side note, D.L. loved the U. He was a guest speaker at business classes up until a year or so ago. After college, D.L. moved into a house with Les, Vaughn, Art, and me. We dealt cards to select bedrooms. Don came in last and got fifth pick in our four-bedroom house. He set up shop in the basement. I left for training with my new job. When I returned, I asked D.L., did I miss anything? He said, well, let's see. The police were here when they stole your stereo and your TV. The fire department was here when rhubarb fell asleep on the couch with a lit cigarette and the couch caught fire. Art moved a chicken coop into the backyard and filled it with homing pigeons and has a show in the backyard about once a week with these pigeons flying around. And Les went to a party last Saturday night and got shot in the stomach with a 357 Magnum. Oh, and I might have borrowed your bedroom a couple of times. So that was life in our early 20s. About that same time, we also decided we should be in the softball league in Edina. We joined the Edina Slow Pitch League and looked for a sponsor, which we couldn't find. So DL appropriately named us the Slugs, and we had jerseys made. The next year, we became the Balco Bombers and pretty much led the league for many years. <clears throat> D.L. was our ace pitcher. Occasionally, Don would fall into a rut of walking a couple of batters in a row, and then the heckling would start. First from the outfield, with Doyle yelling, Just throw effing strikes. Eventually, we'd all be yelling at him. Then Don would throw a strike, and he'd turn around and start yelling back at us. Eventually, we made it mandatory to arrive an hour early and drink a six-pack just to loosen up. This was about the time that we all were getting married and having kids. There is a story of during his courtship with Ruth, D.L. drove over to her house naked. I remember hearing it years later and asking him about it, and he just said it seemed to make sense at the time. 
One of the annual summer gatherings was a party at my cabin. Don and Ruth and their kids were always on the top of the guest list. We also had a couple of boys' golf trips up there each year. I could always count on DL for toilet paper and napkins, zero help in the kitchen. He was always the first person on the boat if I mentioned a boat ride. Morning coffee around the campfire with DL and his crossword puzzle was an automatic. In the evening, he was a major part of the comedy act around the fire. He was typically MC for the night and loved to stir the pot. He always had a front row seat, a tumbler of Kettle One, and a comment about everything. His crossword puzzle vocabulary was a great asset and typically led to mayhem around the fire pit. We have fond memories of him tripping and losing a flip-flop into the fire, losing his balance and doing a fire walk when he accidentally had a choice of falling into the fire or running through it. Always a laugh. Don could name the band that sang that shitty song that just played. He could spout off trivia on the Twins. He could spout off Vikings trivia and even Gopher trivia. He was a true hometown fan. Throughout this time, DL had the good fortune of helping to build the Trio Supply Partnership. Mike, Steve, Becky, and Dan, along with DL, made quite a team. Don was very proud of the company and all of the people that worked there. A number of those people came from Clark Products, and I'd just like to say they had the best darn Christmas party I've ever been to. The Larson family had grown to five and moved to Eden Prairie. Don was a very active husband and dad. Poor Chris felt some of the love when Don stepped up to coach his basketball team. I'm not sure DL and basketball were a good match. This brings us to Don's golf game. Don fell into the average golfer category. If we were making teams, he loved to be the D player. He would always complain about his team with the line, I don't like any team that I am on. When planning a group event, you could always count on DL to vote to scramble, always. A good comic will always use a prop or have a shtick. Golf gave DL all of these tools to work with and used with his self-deprecating style of humor. A round of golf with Don was always fun. Don was a proud founding father of the Friday afternoon Nitwits Golf League at Bent Creek. I believe that he holds the course title for worst shot off the first tee previously held by Mike Delaney. DL's fabled shot was a line drive that squarely hit the concrete first hole yardage monument ricocheted straight back past the group he was playing with over Valley View Road and ended up on the 10th tee, close to 100 yards behind his tee shot. Now it is time to put the spotlight on Don's acting career. DL has had a supporting role in several Balch Studio cult classics. For all of you folks watching out there, grab a pencil. You'll want to go to YouTube, go to Search, and type in Don Larson Movie Excerpts. You'll get snippets from Up North, 50 The Movie, Curry Chicken Lo Mein, 60 and Beyond. You'll get some great DL moments. Johnny Balch told me that he had breakfast with Don a few months ago and Don asked, when are we going to make another movie? I'm ready, let's go. Another thing we did along in our 40s was play a lot of platform tennis. One day we finished playing and went directly to Al's bar on Excelsior to loosen up. The Gophers were in a bowl game and we watched as the kicker missed a 30-yard field goal and lost the game. DL proclaimed that being a soccer player he could easily kick a 30-yard field goal. Immediately bets were made with each of us. Well it has been over 30 years and we have never been able to find a field or a ball to settle the bet. Every time there is a missed field goal, including last Sunday's Vikings game, the call goes up that DL would have made it. Now DL loved a bet and was famous for making over bets. We had many great trips to Vegas and just a shout out to the final plunder that sticks out in my mind. From way back, DL was always in. The Partridge, the Wentworth, 
Chapathon, Demo Derby, Morton, Up North, Hubert's Golf Classic, you name it. Don loved to cruise and he loved to suntan as well. And DL loved to party. He was always in attendance. He and Ruth hosted many New Year's Eve parties and many Halloween parties. When Don came as a woman for the second year in a row, we had questions. Although recently I've heard from several gals that DL did have great legs. Don and Ruth installed a 15-person hot tub at their house that he called the time machine. Get in at 8 o'clock, get out at 2 in the morning. And they always had extra bathing suits so you had no excuse when they said, let's go. Now I said that he was a loyal and steady guy and here's just a few examples of that. Don and Ruth have been married for 42 years. Hats off to Ruth on that. They have lived in their house in Cardinal Creek for 33 years. He bought a Honda Accord from Scott Henderson in 1978 and for the next 42 years drove Honda products. Don sold toilet paper for close to 50 years. He was a season ticket holder with the Twins and Vikings for over 40 years. He was a member of Bent Creek for over 30 years. And he's gone to this, this same church for over 60 years. In conclusion, Don was a generous, caring, outgoing, humorous fella. He was one in a million and will not be forgotten. The world is a less funny place without him. Arse. As D.L. would say, but ump bump God, that's a lot harder than doing it for a crowd.